Hey everybody, welcome to our first stream of the new year. I'm actually really excited to be doing this. Uh, I've been wanting to do a stream for months, um, but after we launched Worse Than Death a few times, we were just so burnt out and needed some time to kind of catch up on other other bits of work. So doing, um, uh, doing a stream just felt like the wrong thing to do. But now it's a new year, it's fresh, ready to do this, ready to play some damn games. Hey Froyog, hey Scoop Jessica, hey Seward, hey Namava, thanks so much for joining. Uh, we have a pretty cool, hey Warm Hat, uh, we have a really cool evening tonight. We are going to play what I like to call comfort food, which is of course Super Mario Brothers 3. Um, but I got a little surprise. We're going to play through Super Mario Brothers 3 on NES, uh, sort of the fast route. And then we're going to do it all over again uh, on the All Stars edition. And as like we like to do in this channel, I'm going to point out the differences between the two, talk about some interesting design uh, changes that you notice, and just kind of like how it feels. Um, and we're going to do it twice, and then we'll probably have some time left over, and then we'll just play it for fun and, and hang out. How's that sound? It wouldn't be a channel, or sorry, it wouldn't be a video on this channel. Um, Without some knowledge. Learning. Alright, here we go. Mario 3. Probably the most, like, one of the most iconic game covers of all time, right? And, uh, one thing I noticed right off the bat that always freaks me out when I go back and play Mario 3 is that th they were smart enough to make a cool little animated attract mode, and it doesn't have any sound until you hit start, which is both really cool and dramatic, and also nice if you like have kids who just wanted to leave this on all the time so it didn't just repeat the same things over and over again oh one thing i should know too because we always do this um i've got the canadian edition of mario 3 so if you can see it's twice as good because it has two nintendo seals of approval one in french and one in english and this is the uh, version one of Mario that got released, not the sort of revision that came later. Uh, and you'll notice both the sort of bilingual back, which is uh, obviously standard for a Canadian release, but you'll notice that guy right there, which is of course the fabled uh, screenshot of a level that never got included in the game, or rather it's a uh, altered level. So yeah, the Mattel logo, this is like old school proper NES. When I bought my NES a few years ago for my birthday, um, I bought it from a dude who was selling it as a collection. So Mario Brothers 2 that we played on this channel, uh, and this copy of Mario 3, and the NES controllers and all that kind of stuff itself, were bought from this one collection. And the guy said, like, oh, I can tell you, you care about this, and you're going to take good care of things. So, uh, you know, I think he gave me a bit of a deal. But yeah, this thing is, like, pretty much mint condition. Um, you know, the manual's in perfect condition, and it's great. And I was super happy to find the original, because there's a story behind that. Um, <laughs> Le Mattel. Uh, there's a story behind Mario 3. Uh, I think I was the first kid in my town to play Mario 3, and that's because my dad uh, bugged the dude to sell it and break whatever street date there was. Um, and I think he paid in 1988 80 Canadian dollars, which is probably over a hundred bucks for that and the game was not that expensive somehow i don't i don't recall strong arming him into doing so but somehow he knew i wanted the stupid game so much that he kind of just made the dude behind the counter give it to me early and then i was the only kid at school who had mario 3. okay here we go so we're gonna whip through a bunch of this stuff pretty fast it's not like a super um um uh what do you call it Speed run. I'm gonna make some mistakes, and I'm, it's not like an optimal route. I'm not that good at this game. You'll notice when I play the game, do uh, uh, as well. I do a lot of like quick turns. That's like how I uh, manipulate the physics to try to not mess up on jumps. I'm sure like people who are actually good at this game do really uh, smart things, but um, that's how I do it. One thing I want to note: this is the first Mario game that had directional items, uh, depending on where you hit a block. It either rolled off to the left or right. And that can kind of screw you up. So whenever possible, I try to play a bunch of games on real hardware here. Uh, I can't in some cases, like we're going to notice for, for the All-Stars Edition, but um, this is playing off a retro AVS uh, FPGA system. 
so it's like perfect quality using like real NES pad. Ooh, good. Thought I was gonna whiff that star on the first level. Uh, this game is so great. The design of this game is so great in terms of like the visual concept and the main point of this is that I feel like when you get to the All-Stars Edition you lose a whole lot. Um, we're just gonna skip this block because I might need that in case I oh well I guess I guess I'm gonna do it anyway. Uh, yeah, when you get the All-Stars Editions, they kind of just screwed up. Okay, most of you probably know this already, but I remember as a kid figuring this out, that you could mine uh, the Goombas for 1-ups, and I felt like the smartest kid in the entire universe, even though every other kid figured this out as well. And I like how the fact that uh, uh, using this sort of trick to get more 1-ups and, and stockpile actually required a whole bunch of skill. So by the time you probably uh, realized you could do this, you had probably got far enough to know that you needed to. And I just like doing this to mess stuff up. Hey Jess, how's it going? Oh my god, party is six or fifty, that's that's insane. I've never been raided before. Okay, that's enough. I'm just gonna do this because I like doing this part. Yes, sir, you're right. If I'm playing on the AVS, I haven't played the game at all. I don't even know. I don't even know why we're here. Happy New Year to you, too. Thanks for coming. This also introduced the uh, sliding mechanic, which, as you'll see once we get to World 8, they use just to really mess you up. And for the first time, you can hit a block from above, uh, which is only those music blocks, I believe, that let you do that. And I love... Uh, how for the Power Star, you get to do backflips. Oh yeah. Durian is, Durian is important, thanks so much for the raid. Uh, hey Phil Trudeau, um, I do occasionally, I haven't in a little while, uh, there was an art stream that's up on the YouTube channel, um, Benjamin Rivers Inc. official on YouTube, uh, that has some art, uh, work that we did for the launch of our last game, Worse Than Death. Um, but I am planning on doing a bit more game dev related streaming. I often don't do it in the middle of game dev because, like, we're just desperately trying to get something done that I feel like it caused me to take ten times longer to do it. But there are some things that I want to incorporate for the next uh, game that we do to make it a little bit more stream friendly. So I'm just gonna have some fun here. Because I love how they built the sort of the shell physics system in here. And this music, so jaunty. And I really like how they made you do things like that. And as a kid, you just kind of got good doing those crazy power slides. Uh, this is how I test if, a, if like a copy of Mario 3 or uh, like an edition, like an emulated version works well, because if you can't do those power slides accurately, there might be some input lag and whatnot. Um, but if things work all right, then you know, uh, then you know like the control is pretty good. So of course we're gonna do the famous uh, white block to get the first warp whistle, as most of us, or at least most of us are over 30 or 35. Um, remember when watching The Wizard, the greatest Nintendo advertisement ever made? And if you have not done so already, uh, highly recommend checking out the Gaming Historian's uh, very recent video on Mario Bros. 3. Uh, it's epic, I mean, it's super long, um, and he goes over everything from the advertising, from the development, from things that changed, from the wizard, uh, um, uh, the advertising campaigns. Ha! There you go. You're right on. Okay, I'm just gonna do this for fun, and then we're gonna get... get moving here. I, I don't think I've ever... I think I can count how many times I got this right, like, on one hand in my entire life. One of the things the gaming historian talked about that I thought was fun was how, like, the character designer just wanted to put eyeballs on everything. And that's why, like, the bushes are dancing, the clouds have eyes, the bushes, like, the trees have eyes, everything has eyeballs. <laughs> yeah, Phil, the, um... I'm sure someone knows how to do it, but I'm not that person. Ah, with that. Look at that. First mistake. That's okay. That's why they put this here. These secrets, when you think about it, are pretty brutal, too. Like, they're pretty confusing. Uh, or obtuse, I should say. Like, you'll never figure this stuff out without somebody telling you. Okay, first warp whistle. Or, sorry, second warp whistle. So, 
we're gonna do this the fast way now, and then we're gonna do the slow way later when we have time. So let's, let's get moving. Let's skip all the fun parts. We, Froyog, we are gonna go straight to eight. Cause I wanna show off a few things uh, between the two versions of the game. And then we'll go back with a warp whistle and like mess around in world five. Cause that's kind of like my favorite. Okay, World 8 is not as bad as it may seem. It is helpful to have some items, though. And I actually find these levels pretty chill, mostly because I think I memorized them by playing this damn game. Uh, I'm not, uh, Command Z, also, Command Z, great name. I shouldn't have looked at the chat while I was playing. Um, I'm not doing a hardcore speed run, but I am playing the game sort of the way I know how to get through it fast. And of course, I did like, I played this game like, uh, beat it two times before starting today. But it's always way harder when you're on stream, because then you're like, oh, I'm so nervous. People are watching. Um, these dudes that throw the wrenches, do you remember what they're called? Because they're like the only character in this game whose name I do not remember at all. Oh, Namava, totally, I get it. There are two levels that give me trouble in World 8, and I think I got them. I think I got them now. Okay, let's see if we can do this. There we go. Like, they really make you work for it. These, um... Uh, one of the things that Gaming Historian talked about was how, like, they wanted to add auto-scrolling to the game. Uh, and this is the first time they got to do it in a Mario game. And they, you know, they tend to use it to make most of the hardest levels like this stuff. Huh. <laughs> the, um... Whoa. The secret to World 8, in my mind, is just, um, get the Raccoon Leaf. Because it gives you a lot of options when sort of navigating tough jumps. But, I, there's a very good chance I'll screw up a bunch of levels later, and then we'll have to figure it out. Look at this, putting a lonely- that dude was sitting there waiting for me to come along. He's like, man, why did I get this job? Rivers on stream. Rocky Wrench, thank you. So, there is a great cheat for this level, which is you can just go and swim down below and skip the whole level, but um, it's kind of boring, so I'm just gonna play it. And the way I always play these levels is it's like managing the wrenches, uh, paying attention to where they are, and kind of like looking, looking at the space between where the wrenches are flying. Because those are the ones that are going to... Like, those are the obstacles that are going to mess you up the most. So, as I'm going to mention when we talk about uh, the All-Stars version... Um, the NES version of this game is so beautiful because it is so stark. Like, there is actually not a whole lot of color going on here. Oh, oh, that was new. I didn't know you could double jump on those things. Oh, we lost our lost our raccoon tail for a, for a reason I've never seen before. Uh, but the sort of starkness, especially in World 8, is really cool. Like, it seems really oppressive and, and interesting. Um, oops. I was reading the chat and not paying attention. Uh, Jessica, I don't know if you can from... I mean, there are parts where you sort of surface for a moment and you can screw up. It's definitely easy if you don't time it right to get crushed and die, uh, right away, which kind of makes you feel real stupid. Okay, hold on, we gotta... So, when I moved to uh, uh, Ontario from Manitoba, I brought my NES with me. Um. Oh, there we go. Uh, and before I moved, I beat the game with warps. And I had a friend who was like, oh, you didn't really beat the game. Which is funny you mentioned that before, sir. Um, and I was like, well, screw you, buddy. So then when I moved, uh, one day I was like, well, I have nothing but time. Um. So I beat the whole game every single world, and I think it took me five and a half hours at the time. Which is nuts. A waste of a good, warm summer day. Ah, I never know how, like, the RNG or whatever on that works. Um, we are on this... Uh, should I risk it? You know what? You can... F I'm gonna go here, and I'm gonna farm, um... 
um, farm raccoon leaves, because I might need them later. Look at this nonsense. They purposefully punish you for trying to get that block there, too. Or that uh, item. Ugh, waste. It's the cheap, cheap stage. Notice how many coin um, patterns, too, are basically an M or a 3, constantly. It's like the designers were trying to, trying to outdo each other. Those fish can't swim in fire. I like to call them also cheap cheeps. Uh, hey. Uh, I'm just doing this because I want to get uh, another item. They're like micro stages. They're extremely short. And you can get a leaf at the end. So in case I totally, totally bail and embarrass myself later on, at least I've got, I've got some items. Screw you, buddy. There we go. Now we're just, we're awash of leaves. MMM. I'll use one of those now. Woo, okay. I might talk a little bit less during this stage because this level gets a little hairy. Uh, you can't actually beat this with the fire flower and do pretty well with it, but I find um, I prefer having the leeway of some uh, floaty jumps. This is like a level where you wish you had a princess uh, toadstool character to play as who could float. They do tend to design the little platforms, though, essentially to fight... Uh, oh, that was close. Uh, to sort of help you deal with the fact that there's uh, some physics and a bit of a slippery, slow, gradual slide to Mario when he stops. That's not too bad. See how, like, short that stage was? Okay. Momo, -mom, yep. Oh, see, he just sprouted wings there for a sec, so if we didn't take him out, things are gonna get nasty real fast. All right, doing good, doing good. I love the dancing skulls. Uh, how many people do I dev with? Uh, my wife and I are a development team. She's a producer, I'm the main designer and programmer currently. Um, but depending on the project, we often work with other people. So we hire other artists or, or whatnot. And we're looking to work with some other folks for our next game as well. Okay, let's do this. Here's what we're gonna do, because this level is nonsense. Let's get up here to this pipe. Uh, yeah, the P-Wing is great. Man, I always forget where they are, too. Uh, for, uh, cause the, um... You can get some of the item... Uh, item bonuses, but I kind of forget where the rest of them are. This is where everything just goes sideways, usually. Oh, I screwed up because I had an easy easy out and I just messed it. Here we go. Okay, we're good, we're good. We made it to the end. Woohoo! Come on, come on, come on, star. Yeah, five up. Yeah, it's, it's pretty funny. She keeps me in line. I always have the big ideas and she kind of says, well, time to get something done on time and not waste all this money. Oh yeah, Nemovo, that level is brutal. Only recently do I feel like I've got it down. Uh, two is actually not too bad. So, of course, we're going to cheat. Pay attention to, because we're going to, uh, to the way the quicksand looks, because I'm going to mention that when we go to the Super NES version. Um, let's go here and get an item. So there's two pipes. The one on the right gives you uh, coins. This one gives you um, an item block. Because, oh boy, do I ever want that raccoon leaf? Oh, baby. Keen Ed, what's up, man? Thanks for coming by. Okay, I'm going to try not to mess up the second half of this level. But, technically, I just got to do this. Forget everything. Woof. There we go. Helps to have that, uh, helps to have that leaf. Okay, castle. 
Uh, yeah, dude, we're doing a fast run through the NES version, then a fast run through the Super NES version. That's the little secret that I just revealed. And then we are going to go back to the NES version and just kind of play around for fun. So this whole entire level was a maze, and there were like, like two dozen doors or something like that. Um, but you have to only go through, what, four or five of them? And the thing to remember is once you get to this area, just go right to the end. I don't know why I did that. I should have just left it in case I needed it later. Whoa, look at that. Oh, first death. I can't believe I bit it on the lava. That was so stupid. Weak sauce. Oh yeah, Kina, totally. I was just saying the first time I did it as a kid, it took me over five hours. Maybe I was just bad at video games. But it felt like the biggest adventure of my entire life. Oh, wow, Kina, that is intense. I have never done that. How old were you? Was that like a recent thing, or were you... Uh... Were you in a particularly skilled portion of your... Of your life? I know as I get older, a bunch of this stuff seems to get harder. Fifteen years ago, okay. Ugh! Look at that. I'm just whiffing this level. It's not even that confusing, but I just made that one mistake and now it's all... It's all gone wrong. So you just keep going here. Avoid that. Get your star. Book it into here. Murder this boo who's just standing there. You can run through this if you're... Uh, if you're invincible, and then you can... Whoa, whoa. Those have names too, and I forget what they are. So, look at all the... Hit There's lots of doors, but this is basically like a ghost castle before there were... Uh, or a ghost house before there were ghost houses. So we're gonna get past that swamp. Uh, thwomp, rather. Hit this gray P-block. Notice the gray one. And go to that invisible door. And now we get to go to the bus. Spinny disco thing goes. Yeah, that works. I like how the P switches like affect the conveyor belts. Like there's some logic to that. I wonder if these conveyor belts are actually taken from Mario 2, now that I think about it. Never thought about that until just now. Oh, 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 oh! That ain't good. So like I was saying, I think I was the first kid in my entire town to get Mario 3 just by pure uh, fortitude of my dad being extremely persistent, but I do remember I had a friend named Jimmy who had the uh, Famicom version. No idea how that happened. Uh, and I remember playing it at his place and realizing it was way harder. Alright, last two levels. Let's use one of these uh, leaves. Huh. Yeah, I... I don't think I've beat the last levels. Um, the thing I love- I absolutely love this level. Uh, and I like- what I like about it is you kind of just have to learn the rhythm of it. Usually when I practice this game, I play it with all the sound off. I just like listen to music, put it like a record on, um, and play it. Uh, so I just don't get distracted by, you know, like the sort of stressful music that's happening right now and uh, all the other sound effects. And I just sort of like breathe slowly, get my Jedi instincts going on, and um, and just pay attention to what's happening. And it's pretty neat to see how uh, how the rhythm of the level works. And a lot of the stuff I just have, like, built into my motor memory from playing this stupid game so many times. Whoop. Whoop. And they always do this, they always do the double-stacked... Uh, barrels, and there's, I think, a big barrel, or two big barrels later on. Oh no, it's the end of the level. Man, that was short. Oh, good, good question, um, Tina3. What, what do you say, chat? I won't give my answer, I just want to hear what the chat has to say. Alright, here we go, final level. Uh, note the design of Bowser's Castle, too. Does it look like a melted purple cake face? Like, it's kind of bizarre. <laughs> Got to my- yes, of course. Okay, here we go. I love how the first thing they do is psych you out with those, um, uh, Bowser statues. And once again, they've done a bit of a maze design level that's meant to mess you up, but it's actually pretty straightforward. Ah, oh, that was the wrong 
That was the wrong spot to stand in. Um, they do, however, give you this. And there is a trick where you can't get through this wall uh, if you crouch in there a certain way. But you have to be Super Mario, and clearly I've messed that up. So this is gonna be fun. Actually, is this even gonna be possible? Oh, we'll find out. Okay, we're gonna try to head. So there are multiple paths here. There are three, uh, actually four, I think, uh, horizontal paths. But the one that skips you right to Bowser is the one here on the top. So I'm gonna do this. Yeah! Uh, so I, this is an original cartridge, original NES cartridge, uh, Command-Z, and this is um, running on a retro AVS FPGA system. So it's real hardware, uh, real hardware, real software, and real controller. Put the, the old original right there. This is also the first time they did the Bowser um, flame thing, and I, it's so, oh crap. I was talking while doing that. Uh, it's so cool because it's so menacing, like you just don't know. What the f uh, when you got there, you're like, what the hell is this? It's the first time you ever saw that. It's gonna fly with these dudes. This is definitely going like, this is tougher than when I was just practicing before. Uh, Bowser's in there, yes, but they don't do the, um, sorry, what I mean is that they don't do the uh, fireball lead up as a little uh, foreshadowing for what's about to happen. Hold on, let's see if I can do this. Here we go. There's the wall trick. So as a kid, I remember the only way I used to be able to beat this stage was that I tried to get the P-Wing and save it for this stage because I found the donut uh, platforms to be so difficult I could never make it up there. You know, now that I think about it, these statues remind me of the uh, fake Kraid in Metroid before you see the real one. Okay. And I feel like these are not specifically timed either. They're probably on a bit of a randomizer. All right, here we go. Final boss. That music is intense. And I love how they use all those different sprites for Bowser, so that as he turns around, they kind of um, mess with him a bit. Oops. Um, so that it adds a little bit more animation without actually adding any uh, extra graphics. Ah, oh, man. Okay, well, he's digging a big pit today. Oh. I'm doing terrible on this. This was so easy before. Oof. Okay, I'm gonna jump left. No. Ah! I can't believe I died of Bowser. That is such weak sauce. Last try. I know. Dude, I know, this is awful. I swear, I beat the game twice before without even, like, blinking. On stream, though, man. It's always hard on stream. Let's do this again. At least we have an infinite supply of 1-ups, but... Without the, uh, without the raccoon tail, it's a little bit harder. I gotta focus. Do I look stressed? I feel stressed. Whew. Keenad, I tell you, man. Me too. I'm sorry to disappoint you. As you, uh, those of you who watch the Mario 2 stream, um, I can do that one, know that I can do that one pretty fast, but this one still takes me like 25, 30 minutes. Huh. Let's not, Sirit. Let's not say we did. I would love to know the programming behind how Bowser tracks you. Because you know, like, you can't... You can fool him, but there's still... Um, there's a danger zone in which he will still track you a little bit. I did that on purpose. Okay. 
Okay, no matter what, just eat the hit. Just eat the hit, just jump. You got him, just jump. Woo! Finally. So we're gonna go through the ending so I can talk about something. And then we'll do the Super NES version. This music is absolutely awful. Or uh, awesome. Not awful. It's beautiful. Stirs the dead cells in my heart. Play, you know, playing with error as power. Also, I love that they're like, hey, the biggest game in our in history is... Uh, gonna, the ending is gonna be a troll based on one of our other games. Just kidding. Haha, <laughs> bye-bye. Sorry you died all this time. Screw you. And the fact that the whole game is kind of set up to be like a stage show with all the props in the background and whatnot and the curtain up rising what uh, whatnot, this all just feels appropriate that they're just uh, giving you a running, rolling credits. So you can tell this is a, a Rev 1 cartridge because the uh, names of the worlds are not standardized. We have Desert Hill, it's not called Desert Land. Uh, Oceanside, this to me is the way this game is meant to be, not the way they sort of change it later. Big Island. There's Big Bertha. Ha! <laughs> sure, yeah, totally. The Sky. Look at the Koopa yelling at the, um... Yelling at the Statue Mario. Or, sorry, uh, uh, laughing at the Statue Mario. Iced Land. Like, between Mario 2 and Mario 3, they're just nailing all this ending music. It's so good. Pipe Maze. Castle of Koopa. Oh, Phil Trudeau, that is the most amazing thing I have ever heard. You are 100% right. That is now what I consider to be the actual reality of Mario. Oh my god. Oh my god, I can't even... I don't even know what to do. That's the best thing. Whoa, amazing. Holy crap. Okay, so we beat the game through the super fast way on NES. And just give me one minute and we're gonna set up on Super NES. Alrighty. I'm glad you like the whole music for you That is uh, one of our date themes from Alone With You. It's one of my favorite tracks from the game. So we are gonna play. Yes, you totally did see that. Super Mario 3. So, um, no judgment, but who here in the chat uh, prefers the All-Stars version of the Mario games to the originals? Because I know I definitely don't. I prefer the NES. Also, look at the Mario Brothers 1 box. Like, did they have to scan a dirty box? You couldn't have cleaned that up? Like, this doesn't look too bad. At least they have the Mario Madness line, but... Like, look at that Mario... Like, it's like they bought that from a shady collector and then scanned it. Okay, so here we go. Let's do file B. So I really don't like the All-Stars versions of these games because they just look and feel and sound really weird to me. Um, but we'll talk about it. This actually has a very different sort of um, uh, curtain. Also is playing music, whereas the other one was silent. The way it treats the background is totally different. Uh, of course, you've got a different looking Luigi. I mean, that's kind of cool. Yeah, not enough French, I agree. Yeah, you got that Super NES bass. So here we go. Like, this is just madness to me. Look at all those extra colors doing absolutely nothing. This is one of those things where if you sort of know our games and what we talk about uh, design a lot, where this feels like someone added 17 new layers to a design that was perfect uh, from the get-go. So it bothers me. It bothers me greatly. But anyways, we're going to beat the game anyway. Huh. <laughs> 
That's true. Like, they got like a bit more steel drum in there. That sounds good. Like, that's a great rendition of that song. Those backgrounds, though, like, the whole point was that they were like stage props, right? On a level. Much like what Philip Trudeau said was sort of the, the idea going on. And now it's like, no, it's a real world built out of a bunch of blocks, which seems weird. So I feel like it really kills the vibe of the game. But I'm just gonna... Yeah, it ruins the stage play theme, totally. Like, things get very literal, especially later on we're gonna see, and that find that is uh, very weird. And like, I love the stark, dark, uh, underground levels, so every- everything that is dark in the original version of Mario 3 here is like always brightened up and it looks really weird to me. There's also, if you guys zoom in on the stream or like look real close, uh, if you look at the flashing P block down there in the status bar, there's a mistake. There's a one pixel mistake when it's flashing. See if you can find it. <laughs> For, yeah, they, they had a bigger budget this time. What I find interesting, it's a Super NES game that has a bunch of dithering in it. Like they, you don't see that too often. This is also like a good rendition of this track. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and um, pull off this trick again, just for for yucks. Like, assuming I can do it. And you'll notice, like, the red and brown Goombas no longer are extremely distinct. They're actually uh, a lot closer in color. And if you were playing this on, like, an old CRT, especially one that wasn't super color accurate, um, those would be... Uh, those would look very similar. Ah, oh, crap! I was reading the chat, not paying attention. Yeah, I have no idea what the, uh, what the, um, development process for this game was. Who did it? Like, which team? What was the point? Oh, Keenad, really? Could you do that now? Yeah, the parallax is weird, too. I do like the, like, the sort of recessed blue hills in the background that kind of are disappearing into the atmosphere is kind of nice. But it's just not it's just not what the game is supposed to look like to me. And that definitely sounds like a uh, Super Mario World kind of pickup sound. Now, I'm making all these complaints and stuff, but like the day the Wii collection came out, which was like a $50 ROM pack, uh, I totally bought that just because I wanted the book that had all the design elements in it and the um, original design materials. There you go. Once you see it, you can't unsee it, right? Yeah, there's so many, so many colors in the game. It's just like... It's just all over the place. The one thing that's different between a lot of like... Um, Genesis and Super NES games is that in early Super NES games, the way they colored things, the way they added shading, was almost like they were doing per-object shading. Like, they just shaded everything with some, uh, based on some invisible light source, and everything had, like, a bunch of round edges and whatnot. Um, but in Genesis games, they often use less color, and it kind of made things feel more unified in a, in a scene, as opposed to being, uh, as colorful individually. Also, in the NES version, those bushes are have a transparent um, color layer. Okay, let's go get some items while we're doing this. Yeah, sewer. It. It's just... It's like a bit of Star Wars Special Edition going on with this. Let's do this and see if we get it. We're not gonna get it, but I'll try. Ugh. Nemova, I wouldn't... I wouldn't argue that. Okay, watch this castle. Ah! What the heck is going on back there? The parallax is cool, but oh my goodness. What happened to our dark, foreboding, uh, specifically designed castle? Oh, oh I didn't get my... I didn't get takeoff. 
Also, Dry Bones is now like a simple gray as opposed to being that cool uh, blue tint. Oh, that's a new, uh, that's a new sound effect on the, um, Warp Whistle. I forgot about that. Okay. So, one thing, too, is, like, on the controller, um, for some, uh, normally on NES, it's, like, B to access your, um, access your items, but for some reason they just moved it to X, and I don't know why. Because they had a B button. Toad Seduction, let's see it. All right, let's see what world look world eight looks like here. We'll mop this up and then we'll go back and play around. Like to, to me, this looks weird. And look at this, like what is this, Joe and Mac? This is so bizarre. Gone are like the dark, foreboding uh, void of the background. When you consider how good some Super NES games look, and just sort of, not just like the technical proficiency, but the artistry that's uh, put in, some of this does feel like pretty B tier. It is, it is blasphemous. It's so weird. Oh, and I totally whiffed him too. Caveman Ninja for sure. Yeah, it's bland. It's like someone got the Super NES um, sort of color palette uh, pack off the Unity asset store and just put together a platformer. I don't know what this game was rated when it came out, like in GamePro or, or EGM or whatnot. Flintstones. I've never actually played that game. I'm not sure if... Uh, I, I would say the backgrounds that would make this level to me feel less stressful uh, because it doesn't feel like this imposing black void and that is like a major uh, major factor of sort of the design language of this game. Um, like I feel more relaxed playing it even though there's technically more stuff going on. But I also think that's not great too. Oh, Keenad, you and your, I love it, your encyclopedic knowledge of EGM scores. 10, 9, 9, 9, 9. That's good. Hey, Scoop Joy, thanks for coming. I'm sorry you have to deal with that. I don't have that issue. Oh, look at that. It's like they're swimming in milk chocolate down there. Shinobi 3, um... Keynet, what issue is that? Do you mind? Uh, what issue number is that? I'd like to look for that. So we're just going to do this straight again. We're not going to do the swimming hack. Issue 50. Okay. Thanks, man. I'm going to look that up. Yeah, the, the black background just sells it. Like, it just looks cool. It's funny, too, that this is a game, like, we're on the NES, Mario's not even anywhere near his color, uh, his, like, actual character color. He's, his overalls are black, which is pretty funny. Um, Keynet, I think you should, I think you should be invited to play an after-show game on P1P, and you can just destroy everyone. Pleasant little northern Quebec log cabin we're hanging out in. <laughs> I know, Stuart. I um. Oh wait, though you had the you had the one two weeks ago where everyone was doing super good. You had the perfect game. This that bothers me that the uh, the pipe backgrounds for for these little transitions are no longer that cool icy crystal, but just some weird rock. <laughs> Impressed slash freaked out. Hey man, do what you gotta do. Uh, 
Oh crap, I didn't mean to do that, because now B chooses an item, which is not what I wanted. Okay, well, we're gonna go... We're gonna farm these leaves then, because I just screwed myself over. Oh man, it's got the... It's got the underground reverb. Oh, that's a weird, weird sound. I can't believe I whiffed that, too. Well, we're not getting a leaf out of this one. Oh, no, yeah, we are. Sorry, it's an item box item. Okay, we're just gonna go get all three leaves, just in case. Because I screwed up like I did last time. Yeah, it's, it's like uh, World 8 Seinfeld edition. What's the deal? Well, I'll use floating platforms. Okay, that's, I'll stop doing that. Now this area just looks like some creepy prison. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes, Phil Trudeau, you're correct. It's a bit of a... It's a bit of a dog's breakfast, that one. Oh! That was a bug, wasn't it? Oh, God. Oh! I can't believe I got screwed over by that. Damn you, physics. Did you notice there's a sound bug there? Uh, bollocks for the dog's bollocks. There actually is a bar down the street from me called the dog's bollocks. So I'll go with that one. Whoa. I'm stupid for trying to do this as small Mario, but... Oh, we're just gonna try. Haha. -ha. Whoa. Come on now. Give me that item. Give me that item. All so cheap. Come on. Whoa. <laughs> oh. Okay, we're... Leaves to plenty. It's like a distillery in here. Or a dispenser, I should say. Look at this background. What is going on? Now, the, the lightning flashes are pretty cool, but this is a very different sort of scenario. And they, they do make this level, in contrast to the uh, tank levels, a little bit more difficult because those lightning flashes are kind of distracting. Especially when you're trying to manage, like visually manage all the stuff that's happening. Yeah. I agree, it's just the color, um, they use the color simpler too, so it just reads better. But like, oh god, why not? Why not keep a cool color scheme for the other ones too, instead of making like generic caveman background? Ooh, there we go. Not so bad. Not so bad. Yeah, it does. I'm not sure if that is true, sir, but it certainly feels like it does. Aha! I'm taking over your remote. Rural cabin. You know, Keydad, I don't know about that because I get I get hung up on some very dumb levels in Mario World. Um, around the bridge, I forget what the name is. It's like Butter Bridge or something like that. There's some things around there that always trip me up when I try to replay it. Okay, what are we doing? We're flying. Look at this. Check out Donkey Kong Country over here. And there's still an echo. Well, I guess we're meant to be underground constantly, but this weirds me out. It's supposed to be black and white. I do kind of like the beveled, uh, gigantic box, though. That's true, Keyned. But Butter Bridge, yeah, Butter Bridge is like... That's the one that gets me. Okay, what am I doing here? Okay, just do it. Trying not to spawn them. I'm trying not to do that, essentially. Yeah, I did it. Okay, first try. Whew. Come on. Bye bye. Mmm, cheese bridge. Up 
bad, not bad, not bad. Previously, this was the level that tripped me up the most. Okay, remember I said to pay attention for the NES game? Uh, with the, uh, quicksand? Like, also, the, you know, the coloring here is super weird. Notice how the top tile, uh, on the quicksand is no longer aligned with the bottom stuff, and it just looks weird? Like, drives me nuts. It's the kind of thing that keeps me up at night. Huh. Froyog is whoever you want him to be. He's the Alpha and Omega. Okay, so we've got our um, got our leaf. We're gonna try not to mess up the back half of this level, and we're gonna do the super run and just book it till the end. Cheese ball this area. Get past that angry sun. All right. Like they also the uh, they do the fully colored in um, hills in the background, but that again takes away from the sort of stage aesthetic. Here we go. World 8 Mini Castle. The, the disco balls here have a bit of a weird effect. And they don't even use a transparency. They actually use just dithering and um, uh, sort of on-off switching. Here's another thing that bugs me so much. Why are the doors like little pleasant wooden cottage doors? That's not fun. Like, this level makes so much less sense when it's literal like this, you know? When it's just an abstract, uh, those abstract 8-bit tiles. Um, you just kind of roll with it. I'm gonna leave that item block there, in case I need it. Ah, oh, I did it again! Man, that's nuts! Hey, Black Hole Tree, what too? Yeah, that's a, uh, Jessica, the, um, that's the thing about games is like when they, you try too hard to make something look really good. If it doesn't look right, it just looks off. Oh, there's also a visual bug in those blocks. Maybe you'll notice it the next time. Next time I hit an item block, notice the weird little visual bug. Whoa. Okay. Yeah, your brain just tells you it's a door, but now they're just weird floating doors. We should do another Mario 2 stream where I play both. Mostly just because I want to play Mario 2 for the rest of my life. Okay, that's better. Woo! Almost whiffed that again. Let's get our star. Let's head down here. Murder that poor boo. Book it through here. Oh yeah, that's cool. I did a little flip even though I wasn't quite invincible. Just kind of beat the clock. Oh, I screwed that up. It's all right. Book it over here. Get past this horizontal thwomp. So the other thing too is you'll notice the P block is just blue. They've all been standardized blue, no longer gray or any other color. And the, uh, I'm not sure if the uh, secret doors are any different looking than the ones that you see normally. <laughs> yeah, Black Old Tree, this is, uh, this is good times. Okay, here we go. Let's get this dude before he takes off. Alright. Two more levels. Horizontal thwomps are called thwomps. Agreed. Let's get that made canon. <laughs> Hwomps. I feel like we're just digging through somebody's flower garden. And this doesn't even, to me this doesn't look menacing. And they've redesigned the castle. Uh, it doesn't just look like that weird melted, um, uh, like weird disgusting melted cake, which I think was better. What level is this? Oh, we don't, no, we don't need, we don't need to waste a leaf here. So apparently now we're storming Castle Wolfenstein. We're gonna go re rescue BJ Blazkowicz. Oh crap. So weird. Like just random generic background tiles. Whoa. 
But like, aren't we in a dark cave? Like, why is it? Why are we in like a gray, gray like dawn field? It's so weird. It's such a weird. It, like the whole level just feels different, right? It's like a, a little bit kind of happy and cheery and colorful, but also not. Oh, black hole. That's cool. Did you used to make? You used to make stuff that way then. It's it's extremely hard to play auto scrolling levels and check the chat out. Oh, I never noticed that before. Uh, one sec. Um, when you go down a pipe, it actually alternates the stereo sound for the for the pipe sound. All right, all right. Let's do it. Last level. Uh, it's parallax, but like, uh, I don't know. That, that Castlevania 4 background isn't, doesn't feel good here. Let's -a go. Yes, you're right. I missed that opportunity. Okay, we're gonna be safe here. Get our one up, because why not? Does the trick still work here? Yeah, that does. That's good. Okay. So the one thing about when you fill up a background with sort of sprites like that, you sort of decrease its size in your brain because you get a relative sense of space. So the NES version to me felt vast and these rooms felt a lot bigger, but now you see an actual, um, um, you actually see like the relation between the background and the foreground tiles and it just feels smaller and more compact. Whoa. Those are new graphics too for the uh, for the flames. All right, here we go. Sorry, I'm just making sure uh, making sure comic got. Ooh, this is like a this is a weird mix of the song. Doesn't that sound weird? Oh, the weird reverb on that, on those flames is so bizarre. Come on, you ugly so-and-so. The fireballs do look bigger. I don't know if their hitbox is any bigger. Um, <laughs> backer photos or nothing. Namava, you're a monster. I just need you to know that. Inhuman monster. Ah, I hate it. Bwew. Sun's rising. She's in the castle as opposed to being in whatever abstract mushroom background she was in before. I think they've set the type a little bit differently, which weirds me out. Ha ha ha. Bye bye. And down with the curtain. This is good. So they got like new titles and you notice everything is standardized with the uh, levels. Oh no, sorry, my, my apologies. All Stars actually does use the original titles. It's the newer releases, like the ones that's on Switch and whatnot that uh, go use the standardized um, world titles. But this one does actually use the original and I wonder why that was, uh, that was, um, that was done. These little like portraits and pictures that they do in special sprites are pretty great.
good old iced land. Pipe maze. Oh, the way those things animate is weird. Castle of Koopa. Yeah, it's like they just grabbed the wrong files. All right, there we go. That was Super Mario Bros. 3 once again. This time, uh, Super Mario Bros. All-Stars. So we are going to go back to the NES and play around on a different level for the next half hour and um, see some other stuff and not just speedrun the game. Back again. Oh, I know. Kerbu shoe is like the um, what single use item. Doesn't this feel better now? Doesn't this feel? Don't we feel better being back here? I know I do. All right. So we'll just get through uh, world one real fast, and then I would like to you. I'd like to get to Big Island maybe, and the sky. So maybe. We'll just see how far we get, I guess. Okay, well, actually, you know what, chat? I'll let you guys vote. Um, what do you want to see more? Uh, World 4, Big Island, or World 5, This Guy? Based on your reply, I will work there. And we'll play around in that level for a while. Oh, let's go check those votes. We got... Two fours, three fives so far. Oh, we're tied. Oh, fours winning. Okay, Kida, can you can you do me a favor and uh, can you please count for me? But we'll uh, wait till we get both warp whistles. Um, and then we'll decide. Ah, oh, does it feel like you don't need anything other than what's here? It's so good. Look at that beautiful blue sky. Yeah. Let's do this just in case. Actually, you know what? We have enough lives. We're not gonna die. Let's get through this. Side now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, see what's going to be the upsetter here. Let's go get our first warp whistle. Screw that up. A embarrassing. Put her hand in my gamer card. Oh. Oh, I have to decide myself? This is not what this whole situation was about. Come on now. I know what. My choice would probably be World 5, but I don't get a count. Let's see. We got a couple more uh, levels to do real fast. So if Sir comes back and uh, breaks the tie, then there you go. Or somebody else does. Oh, Kina, that's a very good question. I don't know. The shoe's pretty cool. The shoe's like stuff of legend. <laughs> I love shoe. Good job. Nailed it. Perfect. 
Yeah, right? I, Keen Ed, sound, you sound like you're making a really good case for World 5 here. Whoa. Come on. Oh! Totally thought I was gonna get that. It's like a warp whistle. Oh, it actually did have the um, that sound in the original. I never noticed that before. Okay, we're going world five. Based on all the rules that Keynet laid out, that seems to be uh, what's going on. Oh wait, hold on. I forget how to do this. Oh, you know what? We're here. We'll do both. Let's see how far we get in World 4. I don't have any, like, Hammer Brothers, uh, uh, hammers to break anything, so we'll just do this. Yeah, look how cool that is! This is madness. This was absolutely mind-blowing. What madman thought that this was possible? Look at this. Look at those... I'm just being a jerk now. I love how they break, uh, break off into regular sized blocks. Ah! Oh. Whiffed on that one. For some reason, when the big blocks turn into regular sized blocks, they look like shreddies to me. Ned, don't you ever say that in here again. We're gonna get some repercussions, let me tell you. Oh yeah, we got Big Bertha here, right? Oh, I killed an also Jeep. These blocks are really cool. conflict. <laughs> yeah, totally. Oh, this feels so good. Alright, actually this is the first time we've done our... I 100% forget what the cloud does. Does it let you pass over water? Does anyone know? I can't remember. Okay, when you uh, when you guys played this screen, was there a, t a box you always picked? I always picked the middle one. Oh, let's skip a level. Thanks for uh. Was there like, did, do you have a habit of picking like the left one, middle one, right one? Oh, not cool. I forgot about that. I forgot that that was just one of those intro rooms. Buzzy Beetle. I do remember this level being pretty messed up. But I can't remember why. There's some nonsense around here. Uh, these sort of cool underground levels with the very sparse backgrounds remind me of some of the worlds that we played together when we were playing the Mario 2 run. Uh -huh. Well, the old hide the one up in the thing at the top trick. I love how they use the uh, bouncing item blocks with no items in them just to mess you up. Oh, Kina did it? Oh boy. Well then I just screwed that up. 
if you know, please let me know. I, um, I don't remember. Oh, let's go do this. I used to have some of these memorized. Uh, but I definitely don't anymore. Okay, let's do, let's do Castle. The thing about Mario 3 is that the levels are so short that I think we're gonna get to do levels four and five, everybody. Oh, it's a uh, whomp. Keena, do you remember which one that was? That's a great, uh, that's a great spot making you, uh, oh crap, making you use your uh, slidey bit. Again, if you're playing on a console uh, that has like input lag or, you know, something's not quite right, some of these areas are gonna be super tough because they're pretty precise. Ugh. Oh well. Oh yeah. World 7 is by far the hardest, I think. You know, that level is, or that whole entire world is pretty nuts. There's just, like, from the auto-scrolling ones, the platform-controlling ones. Look. Why, why did I even show up? Oh good, water level. Water level with Lakitu, I'm sure this will be great. So what I, I'm assuming that the way those are, the big blocks are drawn is they're actually just programmatically scaling them somehow. I don't know how that was done with NES programming, that's well beyond my expertise. Um, but that is pretty neat. And I wonder, I wonder if that made things more or less difficult. Get in there, get in there. <laughs> Froyak, I hear you man. There are still tons of things about this game that I just didn't do, and I, you know, some people uh, like Warmhead, who's in here before, who uh, is so good at games in general, that he would just tell me about secrets. I'm like, what? Never heard of that one. He's like, what? Like you didn't do that every single time you played? Um, I think because the game is fairly large. Oh man, really mushroom? Uh, depending how you could play or skip things or not skip things, like I think the game is meant to be kind of played your own little way. I forget which level's harder. I'm just gonna pop this mushroom. Yeah, like it's... Uh, I think I picked the right level. There you are. Like, how did I remember that? Man, sometimes I forget my own name. But I knew where that block was. Oh, this world. Yes, this is the coolest. This is the one where you transition from big to small. This is pure madness. Amazing. Whoop. Yes, um, uh, Furyago, what's his name? Look at that evil trap. Look at those jerks, what they did to me. Uh, Gaming Historian actually talked about that. Oh god. Screwed that up. Nice. You know what? I'm gonna cheat. Yeah, feels good to cheat. I just wanted to use that item because I haven't used that in a long time. Oh, this castle looks fun. Looks easy, no problem. Just destructible platforms everywhere. And we're dead on our first try. Oh, it's gonna send me back to the level two at the last part. Ugh, waste of it. Okay, well. Ooh. Weak sauce. Oh, Mr. Xavier Alexander, that's that's interesting.
Yeah, I forgot that you can do that. That's great. Ooh, P-Wing. What time do we have? Oh, we still got a little. Let's see what level five is about. Oh, wait. Wait, isn't this... Can't you do the one-up trick here? Does anyone remember where that is? Where you can do the stairs? The one-up trick on the stairs? You can't... There is a level in here that lets you do it, and I just don't remember which one it is. Oh, you have this noise. Oh, this is cool. They're begging you to go up there. Oh. Look at that. That's so sweet. Tanuki suits. So great. Turning the statue is so cool. Oh, did I get a mushroom? Oh, lame. Okay, let's do this. Wait. Can we cheat somehow? One of the things about this game I always found fun was uh, trying to find all the areas in which you could just barely get speed, you know, to take off. Uh, and I remember seeing some friends be like unreasonably good at it. They could sort of take off from almost anywhere. Ugh, that just sucks you out. There's something about that pipe. There's something going on here that I don't remember, but I remember being important. Oh no, that was straightforward. Oh, I lost my suit on the first boss. I am the worst human being ever created. Oh yeah, man, that's like I was saying before, that's the only way anyone knew where anything was. Oh, one sec, since we're here. Let's fail at this again. Perfect. Just as nature intended. This is our first um, boss castle. I absolutely love this music. This is so great. Oh, it's terrible. The king has been transformed. Please find the magic wand so we can change him back. Whoa. Yeah, man, you're just a deadly weapon, uh, Scoop Joy, when you, uh, when you're a Tanuki. This feels like it's scrolling a lot slower than some of the other stages. Yes, the, uh... These bad boys. Look at that animation. That's so cool. What a simple sort of visual trick to make something that just looks so uh, awesome. Video Armageddon! Oh man. I still get choked up watching the wizard. I remember renting a power glove in the 80s and being like, holy crap, this is bad, but not not in the way that they meant. Uh, so, fun fact, in The Wizard, they play uh, Rad Racer with the Power Glove. And Rad Racer was the first game for which I ever discovered a cheat code. Was it the level skip or whatever it was? Oh, crap. So I sent it into Nintendo Power, and I was like, oh man, I'm going to be famous. Like, I'm going to be Nintendo Power. I am so smart. But I think it was a really easy cheat code to figure out somehow. Uh, and 
probably like a million other kids uh, sent it in because I remember seeing the next issue. They printed the cheat code. And I was like, oh my god, this is it. I'm famous. I'm going to be famous. This is what I've waited my whole life for. Uh, and some other kid got got it, had sent it in. And that's when I learned the world was a, a cruel place. Oh yeah, it's our first Koopaling. Yeah, there we go. Hey, Cerebus, thanks for coming in, man. Okay, here we go. Yeah! It's like Mario 3 uh, wand grab and Castlevania orb grab are sort of the two most important things in Epic Gaming. Scoop Jessica, I thought about it. Oh, that's right. I keep forgetting it's New Year's Day and most people are probably like barely functioning it today. Oh, thank heavens. I like how he's moving his little legs. I'm back to my old self again. Thank you so much. Here's a letter from the princess. It's like, what? Uh, funny fact, right? Like, uh, when you think about uh, Super Mario 64, she the game opens up with you receiving a letter from the princess, but technically this has been going on for a while. The thief who stole the whistle has escaped to the east side of the sand dunes. I've enclosed a jewel that helps protect you, Princess Toadstool. Best level in the game. 8-bit sky reggae. Look at these little monsters. Chain Chomp. We got Chain Shop, we got the uh, blocks that you can um, pick up. We got these jerks. Look at these jerks. Ah! Oh! One of these levels has a really cool spot in the sky, and I forget which one. Here we go. F it all! Yeah, Mr. Xavier, excellent point. It says P-Wing. To a kid, you're like, that's what it says. It's it's nothing other than that. Oh, I forgot that they keep these. Uh, okay, we had a 20 here. I shouldn't have opened that one first. I should have gotten something else, since I knew that was. 10 was here? Ah, next time. That's actually impressive that they keep all that memory um, and track it throughout the game. your prison mail? Scoop Joey, that is dark. I'm very proud of you. <laughs> That's... Man, it's messed up. I love it. It's a nice touch that if you um, book it with Mario and jump... Wow, uh, from a slope, he sort of pinwheels his um, feet. Oh, did I miss a keynote? Sorry. Well, I got one one up. I guess that's okay. Pick a bax. Let's go. Tanuki suit. <laughs> It's always a Tanuki suit in the middle than that one, I think. I'll save that for later. Ah! Ah! ah. We... Okay. We have to get through the tower. Because that's like the coolest part. Here we go, World 5-3! We all know what's in here. Answer is fun. There you go, one hit Kerbu shoe. Yeah, best weapon in all games. Murdering everyone in a boot. Whoa, so good. Invincible. It's the greatest thing that's ever happened to me. Take that. 
this is one of the things where you're like, over halfway through the game, you feel like you've seen everything there is to see in this game, and then you're riding in a shoe. So maybe everything's different. Okay, try not to get that flower. Just the way it bounces is so good. Yeah, uh, it's been discussed, I think, but I... It sucks that you lose it, too. I don't think that it's, um... Uh, I don't know if it was Mimoto. I thought it was somebody else. What I find interesting is, I wonder if there are ROM hacks where you don't lose the shoe if you exit a stage. And, like, how badly does that break the game? Whoa. There's gotta be, right? Can you add? Like, there has to be. Let's do, let's do this Hammer Brothers too, and let's get to that sweet tower. P-Wing, or Jewel if you prefer. I'll do this too. We gotta get one tonight. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. We didn't do it. Look at this. This is like some Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles on NES. Ninja Gaiden kind of nonsense. This is great. Oh. Man, I'm speaking of nonsense. I'm an idiot. There's like a we such a weird random element of storytelling going on here. It's like, why did they pick this level to have a tower that takes you from one spot to the next? And they use scene transitions that they don't use anywhere else to make it look cool. Nuclear waffles. Also, this. Like, what a great use of the level. To hide these little jerks. Um, how many of you, raise your hand, have gotten, uh, like a raccoon tail here and just tried to destroy this entire area? Ooh. <laughs> See? I'm, I spent a long time on it. Also, like, I think these things, these little hanging um, bulbs are only used in this level. So nuts. It's like this crazy atmospheric... Uh, it kind of looks like Castle 82. And then this kind of feels like Mario 2 a little bit. You sort of climb into the clouds. And we got those weird blue uh, vines. Wait, is there... Yeah, uh, Kida, that's cool. Um, I'm just gonna use that. And they have separate music for the second half of the level. Like, how cool is that? Oh, I picked the wrong item. This was clearly a leaf item. Thank you, game. We're just gonna do this, because this level is insane. That beautiful shade of cerulean blue. Man, having to do this, um, having to do this level without any sort of flying ability is brutal. Oh, I actually got two of the same card. Yeah, it's absolutely brutal. I think level, yeah, I think level five is when they just stop messing around. Oh, really? Production replay for Dreamcast? Oh, yeah, baby. Nope. Don't get it. Don't get it, you fool. You've got the coolest suit ever made. Oh, come on. See if I can... Ah, I didn't think I was going to do that. Oh, Kenya, that's interesting. Um, that's, I mean, that's like what with a lot of RPG re-releases they do now where they make things easier in terms of leveling up and whatnot, which I appreciate because there's certain RPGs they absolutely want to play and love. Um, but I'm an old man. I do not have the time. Okay. We're going a little late tonight, but I want to 
I'm having too much fun. Let's do something. Okay. 20. Yeah. So I do remember... I remember that there are three patterns. There are, I think there are three uh, patterns to those that puzzle. And if you knew, if you could hit one of the cards first, you would know which pattern it was. Eight different layouts? We did it! We got one! I thought there were only three. Oh my god. Well, I don't know what I'm, what's wrong with me then. Okay, what... I think six is the worst level. Let's do seven. Yeah, this is better. Oh, don't get that. That's a bad idea. Oh, now I gotta clear out of here. There is something down there, right? this part. I like that you've basically jumped back down to world one. Oh, and look at that. It's a white block. Oh. So cool. You go back down to the ground and then back up into the sky. It's like just a little neat a bit of uh, environmental storytelling. Ugh. And I lost my sweet suit. Okay, we'll play, definitely play for a little bit longer because this is too fun. Let's clear wo World 5 and then we'll call it a night. Ah, It's like one pixel off. Music box. Froyog, okay, right on. I love how dedicated everyone was to Super Mario Bros. 3. It was like the biggest game of all time for NES. Okay, I'm gonna... Let's do the castle. Oh, this level is insane. It's pretty short, though. So they do use the background here, they just, um... Uh, they just, um... Color shifted. Booze? Look at this! Why do you hate me? Ah! Oh. Easy come, easy go. <gasps> See that? I got stuck on the pipe? I totally thought I was screwed there. I remember doing it as a kid, and... I think I did screw myself up. I had to wait for the timer to count down. Ceiling Potobo. Oh yeah, they're called Potobo. Oh, Snatcher. Dude, um, my friends and I just beat that uh, again two days ago. How far did you get, Keynet? make any sense. Okay, let's see how we do this level. Yeah. This ain't going to be good. Well, of course there's a lack of two. It's like Mega Man 2's Air Man stage. Whoa, just gotta keep moving. Oh, gosh. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Ah, oh, I was doing so great, too. I do like how they give you a chance to kind of even it out. Oh, and I screwed up. Wait. Sarah was seriously? Do you still have those two copies? That, that, I wouldn't even, as a kid, I wouldn't even know what to do with that. Like, that's unheard of. That's really cool. Tell me you have, like, a sealed original print of Mario 3 that you've just been waiting to sell for a crap ton of money someday. 
did not expect him to toss it that way. Oh yeah, I died last time at the very end. Whoa. Two more levels. Oh, Cerebus, that's too bad. They're not too hard to find in the box for decent, uh, like in good condition. I think because there were just so many copies printed. Yeah, Keena, it's weird, I... Well, I'm saying like right now I don't find it too bad, but... Famous last words, I guess. Yeah, those are those jerks. This totally is like Mega Man 2 Airman stage. Oh! Whoa! Um, there's a word for that. Mad skills. Uh, Froyog, absolutely. I think we skipped that. That was number 5-6. Yeah, the one level that we didn't do in this, that's, I do remember skipping that. They are pretty tough. But I think as we proved earlier, not so bad. Oh, the king. King's a pterodactyl bird thing. That's a nice touch how Mario jumps on the anchor. <laughs> Mad skills, yo. Oh yeah, the side, uh, the side mounted guns. I do love the turning turrets. Oh, that's right, Froyog. I totally forgot about that. Ah, uh, I should have, um... Well, I would have lost it, but I should have uh, tried to play this level with the Tanuki suit. This was also before the time when Nintendo always put a hidden power-up beside a final door. Oh, Morton. Oh, Morton, you jerk. Oh, that's right. He's like a... Oh, he's like one of the big hammer bros. I forgot that the airship moves when you lose. Okay, well, this is our last level, so... Let's try to do it with the Tanuki suit and see what happens. Beating... Man, beating one of these levels with the frog suit is... It's no small feat. I'm not confident in my ability to get the end of this without losing my Tanuki suit, but if you believe in the power of me, and I believe in your power of friendship, we might get through this together. Whoa. Oh, I'm stupid. I could have jumped on the top and saved myself a lot of pain. Oh boy. Damn it! I failed you all. I'm gonna... Chalk that up to you guys not believing hard enough. This has all gone bad. Well, Cerebus, I think I missed part of this chat here. Oh, darn it, darn it. Okay, I'm just going to... This is our last level, so let's just do P-Wing. Ah, yes. So cheap. Also cheap. So... 
If you look at the um, flashing P meter icon below, below, notice that they don't have a one pixel bug there. Oh yeah, and I think, uh, if I recall correctly, in the um, All-Stars edition of this, they changed the dollar sign to a coin icon. I'm so worried one of those cannonballs is actually going to hit me. I'm, I'm assuming they despawn off screen, but I guess we'll find out soon enough. Okay, stop scrolling. Oh. Whoa. There we go. Hey. I'm assuming we don't get something special if we get a P-Wing. Man, check out that dude's beard, that's sweet. Well, there, we saved Gandalf the White. We did it, everybody. Here's a jewel. Oh! That's why they just call it a jewel, because they're referring to different items each time. They could have just called it an item, though. Messing with the sound. Need eh? Okay. Let's go through one level of pipe maze, and then we're gonna call it a night. I just wanna feel bad about myself. Oh, this level's so brutal. I like the uh, Batman-esque uh, backgrounds in here, though. I know, I could... I just want to play this game for like another two hours, but... I'm sure you guys have something better to do. Nice. Uh, this one? Ah, wrong one. Huh. Alright, well, we'll play a bit longer. Could have beat World 8 again. Fair, Keened. What if I put on Super Mario Brothers 2? Well. Oh, I just realized this game is. You know, with the wrapping, it kind of uh, harkens back to the original Mario game. Mario Brothers. Oh, Cerebus. Totally understand. That's a fun place to be sometimes, though, too. Uh, look, there's another three slash M. How many people do you usually have over Cerebus? Oh, I missed the box. That's terrible. I should, I should be fired. Holy crap, that is a big party. Oh, we have another skip, uh, skip icon. Is it at your place? Or do you rent, like, do you have a party room or rent something out? Wow. Well, you can't be that old then. You can do that. Oh, these jerks. Uh, I don't remember if you go down there. I don't remember which pipes are active here. Huh? Oh, I forgot this is like a bit of a maze. 
No kidding, that's amazing. Ah. Ah, yes. I forgot. This is like a death pit. Let me tell you, that shade of blue, that's basically like our brand color. That's probably one of my favorite shades of blue of all time. I forget how you do this, or what you do with this. Well, this level is complete nonsense, but since we've already built those blocks... Ooh. There we go. That's not too bad. That's not too bad. I find the use of sort of the standard overworld music somewhat... Misleading. Oh, it's this one. That was stressful. That's why they call it Pipe Maze. Okay, a little bit longer. So maybe a couple more levels. Oh, this is the one you were talking about before, which I've already screwed up on. That's right, you can only get... You can only get a star if you've already... already got one. Oh boy. Well, we did everything bad there. Everything bad that could happen did happen. Oh, I see. Let's just give ourselves an item. Ah, oh, look at that. chance in hell now. So what is everyone's favorite level in Mario 3 then? Do you have a specific one? Whoa, I'm just gonna wing it. Yes! No! I totally thought I had that. Okay, I'm gonna grab an item and do that again. Oh, I mean like very specific stage, like four, two. Okay. Oh, oh, I messed that up already. I mean, I think five, five, three is mine just because of the shoe. I'm trying to go for it again because I feel like if I slow down, I'm just gonna make real dumb decisions. All right, five tower, world five tower. World six, huh? Ice level? Service, madman. level at all. Yeah, I've forgotten this entirely. Door number two. Sure is. 
Yeah, the the one in World 8, um, well, maybe it's just because I know it, but the one in World 8 seemed easier. I do remember this, though. Whoa. I did not expect him to respawn. We seem to be doing okay. Ah, <laughs> famous last words. Now we have to get back there. Oh, okay. This isn't too bad. This is more about building a path as opposed to... Um... About only finding the one true path. Oh, I'm sure. Story of my life, Keenan. This level feels like childhood trauma. <laughs> yes. Trying to find the critical path. Doing a bad job of it. That wasn't too bad, that wasn't too bad. I like that you have to figure that out, but it wasn't extremely punishing. So, for those of you still in the chat, do you... Hey, it's a new suit. Do you, um, do you play Mario Maker? Like on Switch? Oh, man. Yeah, I don't have Mario Maker 2, but I do kind of want to get it. Oh, Namava, um, why is that? I'm confused. I don't remember where to go. Ah. Cheating. Yeah, I bought Mario Maker uh, for Wii U, and then I bought it on 3DS. Didn't play it that much. Um, but I do agree that the sort of... Oh, at this level. The stylus... Uh, made it a lot easier to use. This level is pure nonsense. This is like a prototype ghost house. Okay, I think we're going to stop there, because otherwise I'm going to be going through these mazes and get real bad real fast. Uh, that was pretty awesome. I think we can all agree that Super Mario Bros. 3 is kind of amazing. Uh, I hope you look like that look into the NES and Super NES versions of the game, the sort of comparison that we did. Um, and hopefully there's, you know, something educational in there for you as well. But uh, anyway, that's where we're going to stop it for now because oh, I could play this all night, but I probably shouldn't. So thank you so much for coming to the very first stream of 2020. I'm going to do my best to make this a constant weekly thing every Wednesday night at 7.30 p.m. EST. Uh, I've got a schedule that I'm putting together. I will be letting you guys know once I have something solidified about what, what we're going to do when. Uh, we're also going to be uh, bringing in guests, um, some local developers and friends who can talk about certain games even more um, deeply than I like to do, uh, which I think will be really fun. Uh, definitely going to get something going on for like Doom 64, maybe Castlevania, uh, and a few other games that we haven't played yet. And I'm hoping that'll uh, make this a lot more fun for you guys to watch. So anyway, I'm sure we'll see you in Seward's chat and we'll see you next week uh, right here on Twitch. So thanks everybody.